So this is an important 40K topic. And I know we've talked about it in the past. And I know I've expressed it in, in bits and pieces in other vlogs. But I really want to get this up into my archive up here on the blog. I want to get the comments open. Because the biggest choice that you're going to face in 40K, for most of us, what army are you going to play? What is going to be that first army? Now, sometimes you absolutely really don't have a choice. Here, here's a great example. I never intended to play Tyranids. And, and Tyranids have been a blast to play. And uh, certainly in my 40K evolution of strategy, Tyranids forced me to evolve. Tyranids really helped my game tremendously. But I never had any intention of playing them. We're at the gaming club. Warmaster Black Matt, he has a Tyranid army that the club history of this army was such that someone way back in the beginning of the time, you know, like 2006, had a Tyranid army. Then they sold it to someone else in the club. They added to it. Then they sold it to someone else. Then Ultra Bob took it. Then the Warmaster took it. And now he's looking to sell it. So you have like three or four generations of players with this Tyranid army. Everything was painted. Everything based. It came with a gaming case. It came with the Codex, dice, literally everything. So War Master goes, Fritz, you, you want to buy the army? So right away, I'm like, uh, I don't need another army. But I'm like, this is, this is a fantastic deal. This is an amazing deal. Of course, th this always happens all the time also. I get paid. I cash my paycheck. I go to the gaming club. I'm like, you know, got some coin in my pocket. I, I really can't buy this army. I got to fix. At that time, I'm like, I got to fix the muffler on my car. It's hanging off. I got coat wire hanging it on. Do the responsible adult thing. And fix the car or purchase another 40K army, right? Go in. It's always like when you, ha you have the funds, but you desperately need them for something else and you will do the irresponsible thing. So sometimes things like that happen, or I should say the responsible thing, because that car was l that car is long gone and I still got my tear in it. So I guess it was the correct investment to make on there, even if it sounded like uh, I was riding a motorcycle for another two weeks. Sometimes opportunity hits you. Your brother, your cousin, your friend gives you an army, and it's like, guess what? You're playing Space Wolves. But for those of us who are jumping into 40K to make that first army decision, what the heck do you pick? Where do you go? Now, part of this might be you're playing at a club, and you're looking and saying, well, everyone's playing Space Marines. Do I want to play Space Marines? Or maybe you're looking at kind of the meta, you're on forums, you're on YouTube, and you're looking and saying, right now, I'm just picking an army. It changes at every moment. Right now, Grey Knights are amazing. Grey Knights are awesome. Grey Knights win all the time. And as a new player, you want to win. Absolutely. So you're like, I'll play Grey Knights. There's a lot of influences to help make that decision. What I recommend is play the army you want to play. Fall in love with the narrative. Fall in love with the models. Fall in love with the backstory because you are going to be spending a lot of time building, painting, collecting, basing these miniatures. That's the, the three parts of 40K. First part is the tactics, the playing of the game. And that's what a lot of us focus on. Then there's the narrative, whether you're going to read it up on Wiki or you're going to jump into the Black Library stuff or kind of go through the various campaigns and rule books. Uh, why are Space Marines running around? butchering every Xenos, right? Why don't they make friends with Eldar? Well, apparently now they're friends with Necrons if you're Blood Angels, right? Understanding the narrative. You're going to read it. You're going to want to know why orcs are always going on a wog, right? You're going to want to know why the Tyranids do what they do. Who are the Dark Gods? But once you read that, that sacred tome of the Dark Gods, you've got to be careful. You're going to start chaos. And there's the building, painting, collecting, talking on forums. There's a lot of aspects of this hobby. So you need to enjoy the army you're going to play. With the constant rotation of not only rules in 40K, but a new release of rules every, what, two years, three years? Will it ever be down to one year? But there is a constant refresh cycle. Picking an army right now because it's the dominant army, I personally believe, unless you're an extreme competitive player, and usually then you've got sponsorship through a store or something else, so the army rotation is affordable, that army that's number one right now, Games Workshop is going to change it. It's constantly changing. Then what happens if you, if you start an army based on win that you're not passionate about, you're going to lose steam. You're going to play the army. You're not really into it. You're going to buy some new units. I don't really want to paint them. What's going on versus an army that you're passionate about. So you pick that army, Tyranids, Space Marines, Necrons, Eldar, Tau, whatever it's going to be. 
The next step, some of us, some of us can go out and purchase a big army and build it and paint it. But for most of us, we want to start out small because we want to get things built and painted, built and painted, excuse me. And at the same time, right, we have to balance out uh, funds and, and, and other things going on in our life, your other commitments. So you start off small. What units to obtain? I can't really tell you that because it's dependent on the local meta. It's dependent on are you buying retail? Are you buying secondhand? Are you going off on eBay? What's the availability? But what I can say is as you assemble your core army, the thing to look at when you want to branch out that gives you the most diversity, the most bang for your buck, are independent characters, special characters, single model units, uh, stuff like tanks, stuff where you can buy one thing, change the war gear on it, and put it into your army. Think about, uh, think about a Space Marine commander, all the different war gear options. Think about taking a librarian, all the different options on there. That's one model that you can utilize. Now, I would say for the special characters at this point, what are they, 25 35 bucks for a character? That's something you could obtain used. That is something definitely to go on eBay and look, you know, get it for eight, fifteen dollars on there. But it's much easier to inject a character or a vindicator or a predator for playing space marines or a whirlwind on there than it is to kind of go out and buy lots and lots of units. So as you diversify out and grow your army, this is as you're making those decisions of where you want to actually play, that's an example of some key pieces that will keep the game fresh give you different things you can do with a smaller sized army and buy you some time as you diversify and grow out your army.